Welcome again to Mentor Us Live, the only digital platform that gives you connectivity to people in their craft, making it big and making change. Today we are joined in studio by a voice and vocal sensation. At the age of 19, she has taken the country by storm. Her name, exciting, tricky, and it's a craft on its own. Tam Sang Ah Moyo. <laughs> I hope I got that right. But anyway, this lady at the age of 19 has scooped multiple awards from business executive platforms to the Afrofusion album of the year. Let us get straight into it and just find out what exactly sets this young lady apart from the rest of the people. Okay. Tell me, how are you doing? I'm good, thanks. How are you? Please say your name for me. I You're love right? it. It's Tamsa. You are not MQAS. serious. Are you for real? Oh, it's a Q. Yes. Now, besides the uniqueness of your name, you have unique vocal ability. Thank you. Thank you so much. Would you, by any chance, serenade us with your voice and your guitar? Right. <clears throat> I love this part. So this song is called Dear You. I wrote it sometime this year, and uh, I'd lost something that I really wanted so bad. So I put it in the context of a lover, but really, my first love is music. So it'll come across as a love song, but it's more than that. It's called Dear You. Hey, hey, I'm in a space and I feel like I'm just a slave, a prisoner. The danger I crave, I'm lost in my wonder. You're no good for me today. Stay away from me today. Up all night, I'm thinking of my own oh my I'm wishing. Begging me on your knees, baby, come back to me. I know you wanted me, you just want us to be the best thing. You are calling me every day, feeling some type of way, asking a better grace. Give me a tiny break. Give me a tiny break. A break. Do you? I don't want to feel the things that I do. Do you? I don't want to feel the weight that I do. Don't know if I'm misreading you. Don't know if Dig you, I don't want to feel the weight that I do, no, I don't know, Whoa. don't know if I'm misreading you, don't know if my feelings are true, dear you, I, yeah. <laughs> oh All my right. gosh, that was amazing. Thank you. That is 19 years worth of voice. <laughs> Thank you. So tell me, do you sometimes like get nervous or, you know, before? All the time, I was actually really nervous right there. I was like, you know what, just keep it together, Tammy. Really? Together. Oh, wow. Well, that is Tammy in the studio with us, Mentor Us Live. We want to know, how did it all begin? Do you have the typical story? Growing up, age of two, singing lullabies in church and all that. How did you start? Sadly, fortunately or unfortunately, I started singing when I was seven. Okay. Um, I would sing at national events like Nama Awards, um, Haifa would do the opening, I would sing the national anthem. But eventually I began to write my own music and I launched as an individual act when I was 17. That's two years ago. Okay. So long story cut short, yes, I started when I was seven, but professionally as a standalone act two years ago. And like, did you study this craft? Because I mean, you're 19, so you surely could not mm -hmm. have gone to school of music for it yet. Yes, I've never studied music before. Okay. Um, I learned how to play guitar on my own, self-taught, learned how to write music on my own. Um, yeah, and I trained myself vocally. And within the industry, have you, have you like connected with any people who have mentored you? Yes, I have quite a lot. When I was nine, I worked with Prudence, Prudence Katumeni, Bofana, and I worked with Dudu Maninga as well. And my parents made sure that I stayed under the wings of females for obvious reasons. 
um, yeah. yeah, and they did walk with me here and there, vocally here and there, but you know. I mean, I it's, a, it's a very, like the music industry in, in Zimbabwe is an extremely difficult industry on its own, True. let alone when you're a lady and you have to perform in the evenings. True. Did you ever get to a point whereby it was frictionous in your family relations with them not supporting you? Um, to be honest, my parents did support me a lot. It's just the people that were around them that didn't understand why they were letting a small kid who's a female, like you mentioned, yeah. Um, do music and school at the same time and they were worried about me balancing the two and for obvious reasons like you mentioned the men, the male figures and harassing and all that stuff they were a bit worried about that but my parents have been my biggest support they've been a shield more than anything else and I'm grateful for that it did get to that point but they're always there for me and at 19 what are your plans with this as a craft? I have decided to take it up professionally. Okay. Um, I believe that God gives us different gifts to utilize and to complement each other in society. And you never know how I could do that with my voice. You know what I mean, I wouldn't want to venture into a career where I'm miserable and I'm not happy. I know God gave me this gift for a reason and that's what I want to do. So if I decide to go back to school, I'm definitely going to study music. Okay. Mm -hmm. what's, what's Tammy's typical day in the music industry? Tammy's typical day wake up, sing, sing, sing loud in the bathroom, okay. um, sing as you dress up, get ready for a rehearsal, um, meetings more than anything else, meetings, you get to meet people, network a lot because you need that in this industry. And then after that, it's rehearsal and then recordings late at night. I like to record at night. So, yeah. You like to record at night? Yes. Okay. I like that when you said uh, a lot of connections mm -hmm. uh, create the viability of your craft. Um, what are some of the big names that you've managed to associate with in our time now? I think uh, Manuel Pagoro. I think he's helped me grow from day one. Like I mentioned, I used to do the opening for Haifa. Yeah. And I did a couple of acts with Mokomba thanks to Haifa. Yeah. Um, I've worked with Oliver Mutukudzi. I've worked with a guy named Walter Wanyanya, who brought in Joss Stone um, earlier on this year. And that was a big opportunity for me because Joss Stone in Europe is quite a big name. And yeah, I've worked with quite a lot of people, but just to mention a few, Manuel Bogoro, Walter Wanyanya, my dad as well, he's very networked as well, RK, so. The love, <laughs> I, I literally listen to him, like when I get a chance, you know, mm -hmm. he gives me quite a, quite a number of tips, you know, mm -hmm. in my, yeah, my day-to-day -day runnings, mm -hmm. the love doctor. Speaking of which, would we say that that specific relationship with RK as a radio personality has it had that positive lift for you, an unfair advantage to a lot of other young people in the industry? I doubt that, to be honest, uh -huh. because my parents only got involved in the music a few months later after I'd started my own thing, yeah. which means there was a lot of recognition even before you know my dad went to Star FM. I am a product of Facebook. I used to put up clips. And, you know, one or two people recognized, and then that's when I started doing studio recordings professionally. But yes, he has played a role in supporting me and trying to push the brand, you know, putting in word for me here and there. But any influence over airplay or anything like that, no. Nah. 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 That's good, because, I mean, having a silver spoon in your mouth is really no. difficult <laughs> when you have to break through the borders. Now, tell me, what makes the Tammy brand distinct from every other artist? Because you've risen pretty fast and consistently. Yeah. What are the three major things that separate you from the rest? I think the most important thing is the material itself. It speaks for itself, really. I think what makes Tammy different is that she brings a whole new feel in terms of music and lyrical content. You know, these days, nowadays, new school is all about money, 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 and yeah. cars and whatnot. And I've really tried to look at life from a realistic point of view. There's times when you're sad, there's times when you're low, there's times when you're happy, you don't have money. And I've managed to capture that in, in my music, people's experiences and other people's, you know, goings in life and mine as well. But the other thing is my parents. Yeah. Not a lot of people have their family involved in the business. And I think they've done quite a lot, um, sacrificed, you know, which is an undeserved favor. You don't find a lot of people forking out money for anybody's project just for, but you know, because they're my parents. 
they will do that okay. because they simply want the best for me. And the other thing, the third thing is that Tammy is 19. Yeah. And she's young and she's vibrant and she's ready to take on whatever comes away. I think I'm grateful that I got the opportunity to do this when I was much younger and still, you know, open to so many things. So. You've had an opportunity to go uh, abroad mm -hmm. with uh, your music. Uh, you were in the Madison Square Garden yes. singing. I mean, why did you come back? I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know, right? So, like, what this international exposure. Yes. With all this experience and all this exposure out there, what did you bring back to Zimbabwe and in the industry? I'll be very honest with you. When I went to New York, yeah. I was nine. So, for me, it was one of those... You know, you're just excited that you knew you're New York, you're not really understanding what's happening. Yeah. But I've had the opportunity to fly in and out from home to SA to the UK. And I think the one thing that I do value most is professionalism. Okay. Professionalism and respecting your craft. And being out there, you see a lot of people, musicians, who take music as more than just a hobby. It's business, it's, it's, it's an opportunity to involve other people, to make money, to do this, time, time, time. And I think that's the most important thing that I've learned. It's not just a hobby, it's not just a side thing. Okay. It's actually business. So You're talking about the business of music. I, I like that part. A lot of people seem to get into the industry mm -hmm. with the vision of making money. Mm -hmm. If you were to look at it like that, where's the money? And how have you managed to get your voice to harness that specific uh, ability? I think business, how I've managed to maneuver my way around that is simply endorsements. Mm -hmm. That's where the money is. You need to stand with a cause. You need to present yourself as a brand as well. Respect your brand before you ask anybody else to do that for you. Sometimes people will engage with you simply because of the look, like as it is right now, I am the face of Slay by Faye Cosmetics, and that's another way of creating business. But I think most importantly is the music. You can partner through music, you can communicate a message through music, and corporates want their you know, brand sold in, in such a fast and quick way. And music is a universal language, and so you find they'll tap into that and here you are, Tammy and Studio, making a jingle for so-and-so. So that's business for me. And have you ever felt like you needed to prove yourself as a female within uh, the men's world? Definitely, all the time. Okay. All the time. I think the expectation is that you know females tend to fall off the rails and they tend to use rather unethical means to get to the top. and. I feel I should, you know, I should prove that wrong. I should be that one person who makes the difference, who defies the odds. Yeah, it is a male-dominated industry, I won't lie. Most of the time when you go for awards, there's one or two females. And I stand here as a representative of the females out there who really feel that, you know, we need a voice. And I'm trying to do that. So every day is an experience to try and prove myself. Okay, what's that one thing, like, I, I believe, personally, as an entrepreneur, which you are, but gifted with the ability to sing, I believe as entrepreneurs, we are there to tackle the social problems. Now, with your music, what's, what's a social problem that keeps you up at night? I think I simply stand for youth empowerment. Really, like I mentioned in the beginning, family will come around and they'll say, why are you letting this child do music and it really has no, no grounding or no firm rooting in, in, in society. And I'm just really wanting to inspire young people to do what they can to the best of their abilities. If they have a gift, make sure you use that because you find people venturing into so many different things because society says what they're good at is not good enough. You find that I'm young, I'm 19, I should be in school, but I'm choosing music. And so really my role is to inspire the next young person to say, do what you want to do, but do it to the best of your abilities. Stay focused and stay in your lane. I want to speak about the low points within your career, the things that you have gone through, failures. I mean, mm -hmm. the, the downfalls that nearly ripped your passion and your vision for music. But somehow you kind of got back up. What mm -hmm. are those things? Okay, for starters, I'll be honest with you for the first time. Ah. 
Thank God. <laughs> I've never been this honest with anybody, but I think in this industry, there is so much competition and everybody is rooting and fighting for the same position. So you find because you're a female and because you're 19, so many people want to stomp on your efforts, mm -hmm. want to thwart your efforts. And I've had bump-ins with so many people um, who are much bigger than me, people I even look up to. And it's been difficult trying to look at that person the same way. And you know they're smiling at you, but behind your back they're doing other things. And that's been such a discovery for me. I never thought, you know, the industry was that cruel. And people would say it to you all the time, but to actually experience it is another thing. It's, it's difficult. It's very difficult. But, you know, I've managed to fight my way to the top. I have managed to stay in my lane. My parents, again, are my biggest support. They make sure that, you know, I have what I need when I need it. And, you know, when I'm emotionally down, they're there for me. But also the other thing that I've had um, you know, challenges with is coming to terms with the fact that not every deal is for me. I've gotten so many deals from outside of the country and I've had to turn them down for so many different reasons simply because they wanted me to change my sound, they wanted me to change my look or you know, certain different aspects of change and I've had to fight with people to say, look, you know what, you found Tammy as she is. You like Tammy as she is. So why then do you want to change Tammy? And that's been one of the most difficult points or, you know, challenges. And you know you want this deal so badly because it looks so great. But the sacrifice, you have to pay for it. And if there is no material, then there's no artist. And I write material from deep within. And if I change that, then there is no Tammy. Yeah. So I've had quite a difficult time trying to balance that, trying to say no, trying to say yes. Is this good for me? Is this not good for me? Pretty much. And that's pretty amazing. We're just going to take a very short break, and then we're going to get back and uh, talk about the deeper things in terms of the business of the industry of uh, music. This is Tammy and Tezi. You see, we are like a, yeah, a duet. <laughs> we'll see you just now. Welcome back to Mentor Us Live, the only digital platform that gets you connected to those in the industry making it big. And tonight, we are joined by Tamsang Moyo. So Tammy, music has a lifeline, like possibly the shortest lifeline compared to major, other major businesses, yeah. based on your age, your, the industry growth trends and all that. In terms of you innovating the Tammy brand. What's your view and your strategy within the next, for the next five to 10 years? Okay, so honestly speaking, in the next five years, there's absolutely no guarantee that I will be at the top of this game as I am now. But the truth is I really depend on hard work and just pushing myself, pushing my brand. And hopefully by then, I will have some big deal with some big label, Sony, Universal, looking at those. And I think that's what will sustain the brand Tammy. And with the help of the people within, you know, within the label, yeah. they push you to a certain direction, which means trends, trends, trends. Of which, to be honest, I don't follow trends. Mm -hmm. I kind of set my own trends. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, those behind follow. Oh, yeah. That's good. So tell me, um, in one of your articles, you stated that Beyonce is someone you admire as a musician or a songstress. What, what, what three things about her like really inspire you? All right, so three things I love about Beyonce. Work ethic, work ethic, and work ethic. She's a hard worker. She's in and out of studio. She's rehearsing. She makes sure that it's nothing less than 18 hours of rehearsal. And I think I respect that about her. You know, she teaches women that it's not only about just the looks and the voice that gets you to the top. It's actually the work of it. And I love her voice as well. She's amazing. She's an amazing vocalist. She makes sure that, you know, she's trying to work out of her comfort zone, constantly training, despite the fact that she's one of the best out there. She's constantly training and you can never get enough. 
So when you then start looking at people in the industry, that thing, talent, cuts it. Your, your, your gig here is, look, let's work. Let's, let's work. work. What is your greatest fear? And you know why I ask that? Mm -hmm. So many people say that their music reflects heartbreak, especially for women. Yes. Like, don't, don't, don't shoot me down. But let's look at it like from a practical point of view. Music, their music oozes heartbreak or love, mm -hmm. fears and how they overcame it. So I love the fact of fear. Why? Because it shows that you overcame something. Mm -hmm. What's your fear and how has music helped you jump out of it? I think my fear is never being true to myself. So many times in society we put up faces um, because we can't accept who we are. And I think music has helped me to express who I am. So many people come to me and they say, tell me your music is different because I've come to accept who I am and I don't have to put up a face. And how do I not put up a face? I simply express myself through music. Simple as that. And did you ever feel inferior with your, your fear? As some form of complex or what? I did feel inferior at mm -hmm. some point. Some people say I'm very tiny, which I am. I'm 19, but I'm very tiny. And okay, to be honest, I was in a relationship yeah. That was really unhealthy. Okay. And I really couldn't come to realize the goodness in me, who I truly am. And I would put up a face so many times. And after that, I found a way to escape that, and it was through music. Okay. So once again, music has saved the day. Yeah, music mm -hmm. is really a healing part of uh, so many uh, ladies' lives, and we uh, really appreciate that about True. you opening up. It's not True. easy. And opening up is really kind of good. Yeah. And we know that uh, the music, especially if it's a passion, there's so much of sacrifice that you have to, like, you know, do. True. What's the major sacrifice you've had to give up? Friends. Okay. Friends. I won't think twice about that. So many times I've lost friends because they really couldn't understand my path or simply because they took a different path, which is university and all that. And I'm doing music and the time to relate is never there for starters. And when you are together, what to relate about is also an issue. You know, you're talking about books and all that, and I'm talking about music, we would never be able to relate on the same level. So I've just come to accept that I should keep the circle small. And sometimes there is nobody in the circle but me. Yeah. And that's the price to pay, relationships. It's really deep. Wow, Tammy, you know, this, this was really a, an informative interview because some of these things from face value would not sure. have known. You know, so thank you so much for joining us on Mentor Us. We really are going to be following you and supporting you. Okay. Every album you make, we want it for free. <laughs> no, we're okay. going to buy, we're going to support, <laughs> you know. So anyway, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you we for having We will definitely be seeing you on the brick wall for your musical performances. Anyway, for everybody who's in the audience, just um, follow this young lady. She's, a, she's got a bright future. And this industry is really difficult, especially when people don't support. Let's support our own. As you've heard, it's not all about trends, but the true appreciation of the music. Thank you so much for joining us on Mentors Live. It's been another exciting interview. Let's meet again next time. Ciao. Mm -hmm.